Hi, I'm Lou and this is Lily Rowe. Welcome to the next episode of Little Lessons from Lily Rowe, Baby Wisdom for Forest School. Or perhaps it should be Toddler Wisdom now. <laughs> because Lily Rowe is very nearly two and her language at the moment is really noticeably coming on in leaps and bounds like so many new words every day. And um, something I've noticed in particular at this particular stage is she's like a little parrot and she absorbs the language around her um, very very easily so there's a lot of kind of like immediate repetition of what I've said which <laughs> you may have noticed sometimes uh, might she might be repeating things that I perhaps don't want her to repeat um, <laughs> And, you know, her vocabulary is growing in ways perhaps that aren't the most politest <laughs> words. Um, but this has got me thinking um, that, that there is some research that shows just that being outdoors actually is fantastic for language development. And that actually when children are outdoors, that they, uh, yeah, they absorb language more quickly or they, they gain more words if they if they do a lot of outdoor play this language development perhaps is something that isn't so obvious as other areas of development in terms of predicting how children may benefit from coming to a forest school um, you know things like physical development very obvious you know you're running around climbing up trees very obvious that you're going to develop physically but the language side of things is sometimes things that might surprise parents and teachers that they perhaps didn't anticipate that coming on in leaps and bounds. With Lily Rose's development um, of language and just how quickly she picks things up has made me think about how careful I need to be as a parent about the words that I choose to use and I think this is the same for us as for us school practitioners as well. And, and I'm not just talking about swear words here. I, I'm talking also about that sort of emotional dialogue that we might use. Um, so, for example, I've noticed she started to say silly bubba or silly lily wrote. Now, that's a phrase that I'm pretty certain that I've not used. And I know uh, Daddy hasn't used it either. So I'm curious about where she's picked this up. Um, it could perhaps be off of... Uh, she does watch a little bit of te television programs, maybe it's off Peppa Pig or something. But uh, it's interesting that that phrase has picked up and she's using it in context as well. Now, of course, at Forest School, we want to help people cope with failure and not feel kind of shame about failure. So, you know, if I was to mess something up and I go, oh, silly mummy, then that's going to be kind of absorbed and picked up that we should kind of talk negatively at ourselves when we make a mistake instead of perhaps rather thinking oh, oh I've made a mistake this time and you know that's great because I can learn from that and kind of evaluate what I do and do it better next time so I guess I'm just trying to think through how the words that we use and also our kind of actions and ability to cope with failure and to cope with perhaps heightened emotions is being absorbed by the children around us all of the time. Um, so if we talk about ourselves in a critical nature, oh, I'm rubbish at not tying, then that's language that the children are going to pick up on and they perhaps are going to talk about themselves. Oh yeah, I'm rubbish at not tying or I'm rubbish at tree climbing. So I think we need to think carefully about how we use language and to reframe those things in, in a positive way. Because, you know, everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses and that's okay, that's cool and groovy. That's the wonder of being a human being and being part of the unique diversity that human beings are made up of. Um, and I guess it, there's a level of acceptance there about our strengths and our weaknesses. 
Um, that's not to say that we can't improve our skills, you know, if we, if we take steps and effort towards improving things like our knot tying, for example. Yeah, not to be derogatory about ourselves if there are skills that perhaps we know that we could get bat better at. Because if we want children to improve their self-esteem, their confidence, and to be accepting of them, their selves, we have to accept ourselves because it all kind of ripples out of us. So as a parent and a forest school leader, the way I see it is I want to try to use my best words and I guess think about what I say around Lily Rowe uh, and other children, um, which can be tricky, you know, particularly when there are heightened emotions. So perhaps also I need to think about any coping mechanisms that work for me to be able to give myself time to think about what are the best words to use in those more tricky moments. Yeah. So that's the little lesson that we want to share, isn't it, Bubs? <laughs> Is that the lessons? Do you have any thoughts or tips about using emotional dialogue at Forest School? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, do give us a like and thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel so that you can join us in the woods again next time. And thanks for watching. Bye. Children are like parrots with the words they pick up. Parrots. <laughs> <laughs> Negative self-talk, criticism, and even the word fuck. Let us practice using our best words to come naturally so that the children will copy us when they head to the trees. <laughs>